Hey everyone, welcome back to another Jazz Drummer Q-Tip of the Week. If you're new, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you enjoy this lesson, go ahead and press that like button. And please consider subscribing because I put out a lot of lessons that I know you'll find helpful. All right, so I'm jumping right into this really important lesson on bass drum feathering. You know, I get a lot of drummers who ask me, hey Quincy, what, what is bass drum feathering? What is feathering and, and should I be doing it? Um, so I'm going to answer all your questions, hopefully. And if I don't answer all your questions, make sure you post them down below in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you. Um, and also, before I start, just let me know, do you feather? Do you feather the bass drum all the time? If not, when don't you feather? I'm just, I'm really curious. Okay, so what is feathering? Feathering is, feathering the bass drum is basically playing the bass drum lightly, right? Um, and it's meant to be felt and not heard. That's the idea. Um, but it's really important that you understand that it stems from when drummers in the swing era would play four on the floor in the bass drum, right? So you might hear, and that was really crucial to the music. It was really crucial to the music because it's swing music. It was music that was meant for dancing and all the dancers, everyone of course, the band, but all of most importantly, the dancers had to feel that that four to the floor feeling, right? Because they were dancing to that to those to that pulse, right? So as the music progressed to smaller groups um, in the early '40s and smaller settings, right? Um, that would have obviously become very obnoxious in a small setting. Say some people are are eating dinner and the drummer's going. Uh, excuse me, I think that they would lose the gig very quickly. So um, drummers figured out, oh, wait, so maybe we don't need to keep that in the bass drum as strongly, especially since people are not now, now people are not dancing to that four on the floor. So, so drummers began playing the bass drum lighter, much quieter. But the idea, as I said before, was for it to be felt and not heard. So we still wanted that that feeling. Right. So just to demonstrate bass drum feathering, I'm going to play some time and I want you to observe my right foot. OK, one, two, three, four. Okay, so hopefully you can hear this on the recording, but I'm feathering every beat. And what it does for the music, it it kind of it kind of adds more dimension to the time, more dimension to the pulse. So I'm going to feather for four measures and then I'm going to not feather for four measures. I want you to see if you can feel, not just hear, but feel more importantly the difference. One, two, three. Two, three, four. Now, no feathers. Now I'm going to feather again. All right? No feather. Could you hear the difference? Let me know in the comment in the comments down below. Um, it's really important that you could feel the difference, and it's really subtle. Um, often drummers feather way too loudly. They discover, oh, I'm supposed to feather, and they feather way too loud. And what happens is it gets in the in the way of the bass, um, and it gets in the, because it's the same frequency range, right? It's at least similar. Uh, so imagine if you're a bass player and you hear the drummer going, and you're going, you're trying to play, doom, 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 and your notes are not really projecting or being heard. It's because of that bass drum. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I personally feather, um, and there are other ways of feathering. This is not my way or the highway. However, the main thing is to focus on the tone that you're getting from the bass drum. Um, so. Let's look at the way I feather, which is 
Uh, I'll show you two ways to not feather. OK, uh, just sound wise. These are not these are not happening. Either you push into the head. So it'd be this. And he, if you notice in the in the slipper cam, you can see me kind of pushing. You might be able to see me. You'll see the beater kind of going into the head and staying there. Right. Or you come off the head. Suddenly you hear more tone. So it looks like this. This is the beater. Right. So that's two different ways. You either push into the head or you pull off the head. And when you pull off the head, you get a lot of tone. In addition, you're working extra hard to bring it off. However, what I do is I kind of do a combination of both. I allow the, the beater to stay on the head, but I don't push into the head. So this is kind of what it what the result is. I lift from my ankle. Actually, I kind of lift from the middle of my foot. Right. And I just keep the beater there, but I'm not pushing in and I'm not pulling off either. So it's a combination of both. So that's kind of what I do. So a lot of a lot of drummers ask me this question. So what do you do when you're feathering and you want to play a note? You just play that note or play that accent and then come back to, to feathering whenever whenever you can get back to it. So I'll, I'll demonstrate comping while feathering. One, two, one, two, three, four. So now I'm feathering, right? See, now I'm back. So essentially, essentially when I'm not feathering or when I'm not accenting or playing or comping with the bass drum, I'm feathering. And it's not like so crucial that you get back to feathering right on the next beat after you play the, the comping note. It's not that that crucial. So you can, you don't have to think so rigidly about it. It should not sound like this, however. And actually, a lot of drummers, when they realize they have to feather, their bass drum gets louder than their cymbal. So it and it starts to sound real clunky and heavy. And it's just not supposed to sound like that. So be careful. Be very careful. Do you always have to feather? Are there times when maybe you can get away with not feathering? Yes. The answer is yes. In fact, for me, um, and everyone's going to answer different probably, but for me, if I'm playing something that's more open sounding, you know, and I'm not trying to swing. I'm not trying to produce like a, a real strong feel or pulse. Then I'll play. I'll, I'll omit the the, the uh, feathering. I won't feather. Right. Um, so example of that is if I'm going. So if I go from feathering. to Feathering. And then I open it up. So suddenly now I'm not feathering, right? I'm keeping it open. Um, another instance where I'm, I sometimes I feather, sometimes I don't is really fast tempos. I was watching uh, one of my one of my big influences and uh, someone I've studied a lot and, and studied with a little bit, uh, Kenny Washington. And I was watching him at a, playing a really fast tempo with the great piano player, Bill Charlotte. Um, and I saw him from behind and he was not feathering. And I said, oh, man, if the jazz maniac's not feathering at this tempo, then I guess I don't have to either because he's like all about the tradition and has such an amazing feel. So that's when I realized, OK, maybe I don't need to feather at that tempo because it actually um, at that tempo, when you're playing really fast, it can kind of bog the, the, the music, dime, uh, music down or it can bog the tempo down. Um, whereas when you're playing fast, you want to keep it light. 
right? So if I'm playing, I can do it. Now without, now no feathering. You hear the difference? It's now feather. Now, no, no feathers. Do you hear the difference? So, you know, sometimes maybe I'll want that feeling at that tempo, and sometimes I won't. Depend, it also depends on the band, who I'm playing with, uh, the room. There's a lot of factors, okay? I hope this answers some questions about feathering. I think one last thing I'm going to do is actually take off my slipper <laughs> so you can see what my so you can see what my foot is doing when I feather. And I'm trying to think about lifting from the middle of my foot rather than my toes. I'm not thinking about toes. I'm thinking about I want to keep my toes on the pedal, right? So for optimum control. And I'm just barely bringing it off the beater, uh, bringing it off the head. Okay. So I hope this really helps you um, better understand how to feather more effectively, um, making sure that it's not being heard, but it's being felt. All right. Hey. Let me know how feathering is for you. Let me know if you're comfortable feathering or if you hate feathering, if you're terrible at feathering or if you're a feathering pro. Let me know down in the comments down below. And until the next time, as always, practice hard, but what? Practice smart. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.